the other day, Yaraji explained that the kusala or wholesomeness should be obtained by jnana, knowledge. The knowledge that can weaken, lessen the unwholesome state. So this knowledge should be used in order to accumulate, in order to obtain wholesomeness in oneself continuously so that one will be pure and clean. <coughs> so one should be obtaining this wholesomeness continuously in oneself just like a stream of current. So Antaraji explained that dana should be obtained with knowledge, <coughs> having prudence and reflection. And based on knowledge, one should obtain dana. And Saraji went on to explain that Ducharita, the evil conduct by body and speech, should be eradicated. Having moral shame and moral fear on these misconduct, one will be able to refrain from these misconduct with moral shame and moral fear, and thus one will be accumulating wholesomeness in oneself. Having compassion, karuna, towards others, one will be protecting others from being hurt. One will be protecting others from being harmed. So by protecting others from being hurt, one automatically controls oneself not to commit transgression and misconduct. So in order to control oneself, to refrain from these misconduct, one needs knowledge so that one will be able to control oneself. Today, Saraji will explain how Priyutana Hilesa, obsessive form of defilement, could be overcome and also latent and dormant form of defilement could be overcome. So first of all, one should remove or eradicate the priyutana kilesa, obsessive form of kilesa, and latent or dormant form of kilesa by overcoming momentarily with knowledge. And when the knowledge becomes matured, when one attains riyamaganyana, when one attains path knowledge, one will be eradicating the defilement totally to the point of no return. So in Bali it is called Osana Karana, which means removing, eradicating, so that these defilements are uprooted. So today Saraji will further explain from both theoretical and practical aspects. So one can suppress and tranquil the Priyutana Kilesa, obsessive form of defilement, by Viriya Sati Samadhi, effort, mindfulness, and concentration. So this Priyutana Kilesa, obsessive form of defilement are suppressed with this group of three Viriya Sati Samadhi which is called Samatha. But this group of three Viriya Sati Samadhi cannot uproot these defilements. So in order to uproot these defilements one should 
gain vipassana jnana. So by gaining vipassana jnana, inside knowledge, these defilements will be uprooted momentarily. So having this vipassana jnana, inside knowledge, one can weaken the defilements. So by weakening the defilements with vipassana jnana, and when one's knowledge becomes matured, and when one gains riya maka jnana, path knowledge, then one can uproot these defilements uh, permanently. So vipassana jnana can overcome these defilements momentarily, but riya maka jnana have knowledge can uproot these defilements to the point of no return. One may be developing vipassana jnana and overcoming these defilements momentarily, but if he, she has not uprooted the defilements, then wrong views and uh, wrong views and proclivities can still arise. Only by gaining Riya Maka Jnana, by gaining path knowledge, one can uproot these defilements totally. So in Bali it is called Osana Karana, uprooting the defilements totally. In order to suppress the Nivarana hindrances, there are two methods. So two methods, uh, there are two methods to suppress Nivarana hindrances. So one of them is Jhana. The path of Jhana is one of the methods in order to overcome Nivarana hindrances. So Syaraji had explained the Gamma path uh, by doing dana and sila, by performing dana and sila, one is following the path of Gamma. But Syaraji had explained on it. Today Syaraji will explain on Jhana path. So before Saraji explains on Jhana path, Saraji will first of all explain what is Jhana. So Saraji will explain what is Jhana so that the yogi who have heard of it will clarify his or her knowledge on Jhana and those who have not heard of Jhana will come to understand what is jhana? So jhana means observing the object with concentrated mind. So concentrating, observing on the object is called jhana. So this jhana could be concentrating, observing on the concept, or this jhana could be observing concentrating on the Nama Rupa phenomena, mind and matter. Or another way, jhana can be observing, concentrating on the Nama Rupa, mind and matter, which are relating as cause and effect, which are impermanent, suffering and non-self. So there are two kinds of jhana. In the text, these two kinds are explained as Aramanupa Nijjana and Lakanupa Nijjana. To make it simple to understand, these two can be explained as Samatha Jhana and Vipassana Jhana. Arabhanupa Nijjana or Samatha Jhana is observing, concentrating on the concept 
objects such as Bhattavi Kasina, the meditation object of earth. So one observes and concentrates on the concept and one attains jhana stage by stage. So this samatha jhana is the kind of absorption by observing the single object of meditation, which is a concept. So vipassana jhana is observing the nama rupa phenomena at the moment of arising by satipatthana way of practice. So by practicing satipatthana meditation, one concentrates on whatever object that arises. So in order to note the object, the yogi aims the mind towards the object and put effort. So by noting with aiming and effort, the noting mind will become direct or face to face with the object of meditation. And also the mind will be very close to the object and the noting mind will rub onto the object of meditation. When the noting mind rubs on the object of meditation, the mind will be free from nivrana, hindrances, and thus there will be piti, joy and rapture, there will be sukha, happiness, satisfaction, and also upeka, the mind will be balanced, noting with balanced mind. So when this happens, there will be kanika samadhi, momentary concentration, and thus there will be factors of jhana, will be developing and one will also gain jnana, knowledge. So by gaining knowledge, one will discern mind and matter distinctly and one will also understand cause and effect and also one will understand the characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self. So one will understand the characteristics of impermanent suffering and non-self through vipassana jhana. What is different between these two is that the first one, the first kind of jhana, observes only on the concept object is concentrates only on the object that is a concept. So this first kind of jhana is tranquilling the mind on the object that is a concept. And this jhana can become uh, developed stage by stage and gain a vinyana uh, supernormal knowledge and also one can practice jhana as a foundation of vipassana. If one dies by attaining jhana, he, she can be reborn as a Brahma based on the level of jhana the person has attained. So as a Brahma, there will be a long lifespan, but the Gilesa defilements are not uprooted by attaining jhana. The second type, Vipassana jhana, observe, is observing the Nama Rupa phenomena, which are Paramatha, ultimate truth. So Vipassana jhana, can be attained by observing the Nama Rupa, which is ultimate truth. 
and one will be developing vipassana jnana, insight knowledge, stage by stage, and one will come to understand the characteristics of impermanence, suffering, and non-self. And finally, one can discern the cessation of nama rupa, and one can attain nibbana. So this vipassana jhana can lead to attainment of maga jnana, path knowledge, fruition knowledge, and also it can also lead to realization of nibbana. So this vipassana jhana is the jhana observing the three characteristics of impermanence, suffering, and non-self. And it can further lead to realization of the Maganyana path knowledge and also realization of Nibbana. So by practicing Lokiya Jhana, by practicing mundane kind of absorption, one can attain starting from the first jhana. So by attaining starting from the first jhana, the Priyutana Kilesa, obsessive form of defilement and nivrana hindrances are suppressed. So with this mundane kind of jhana, one can suppress, one can tranquil, and one can distance these defilements and hindrances. So at the higher level of jhana, one also overcomes the jhana factors, the initial application, uh, such such factors of jhana are overcome at the higher stages of jhana. So by practicing jhana, the priyutana kilesa, obsessive form of defilement, are suppressed, and also piti joy is also suppressed. And by gaining jhana, one can also gain Kamasakata Samadhiti, having right view that uh, beings have one's own deeds as one possession. So the kind of knowledge one can gain by gaining this Lokiya Jhana, mundane kind of absorption, it is called Jhana Samadhiti. So this uh, knowledge, samadhiti, this right view, right knowledge, associating with this logia jhana, mundane kind of absorption, is called jhana samadhiti. So this jhana samadhiti could be gained through practicing mundane kind of jhana. So from the junction of Kamasakata Samadhiti, one can follow the jhana path. And by following the jhana path, one can get jhana Samadhiti. So dana, supporting, helping others with material things to make other people happy and well, and observing sila, morality, so that one's body and speech will be pure and clean. So the wholesomeness of jhana and sila cannot overcome the nivrana hindrances that can arise in the mind. So this jhana sila cannot overcome these hindrances. So in order to make the mind calm and tranquil, 
one needs to practice samatha. And if these nirvana hindrances are arising in the mind, then the high class wholesomeness has no chance to arise. So that's why it is said that the nirvana hindrances hinder or obstruct so that wholesomeness has no chance to arise. So that's why the nirvana hinders and obstructs so that the wholesomeness cannot arise. So indulging in the sensual desire, indulging in Kama Chanda, sensual desire, there will be wanting to see, hear, smell, taste, touch, good, uh, pleasant objects, and one will be wanting to see, hear, smell, taste, touch, better and better objects. When one meets undesirable objects, one will have anger, hatred, aversion. So when this happens, the mind will not be pure and clean, and these hindrances are blocking, hindering, obstructing the wholesomeness from arising. And especially the nirvana hinders, obst- uh, hinders, obstructs, so that the high level wholesomeness cannot arise. So when there is lack of energy, lack of effort, flinching away from the practice, if one is lazy, then high class wholesomeness cannot arise. So when there is tinamita, sloth and topper, lack of effort, not wanting to put effort, flinching, withdrawing, wanting to withdraw from the practice. So when this tinamita arises, then this hindrance is obstructing, hindering, so that wholesomeness cannot arise. And when the mind is getting restless, the mind going here and there without any control, then wholesome mind cannot arise. So when there is regret and remorse, having regret about bad things, wrongdoings that one had performed, then it is a hindrance in the practice. And if there is wrong view that doing good deeds does not bring good results, doing bad deeds does not bring bad results, So if there is wrong view, if there is uncertainty, having doubt, then the wholesomeness has no chance to arise. So these hindrances are called nivrana because it blocks, hinders and obstructs so that high class wholesomeness has no chance to arise. So at the moment these hindrances are arising, the mind will not be pure and clean, but the mind will be polluted. So that's why these hindrances are also called Tedeso Upakilesa, mental obduracies, because they make the mind polluted, impure and dirty. That's why these hindrances are also called Jedeso Upekilesa. When these Nivranas arise, then the knowledge will be weakened and also new knowledge has no chance to arise. That's why it is called Panyaya Dupali Karana because these hindrances weaken and obstruct the knowledge 
from arising. So these uh, unwholesome states, they are called nivarana because they block, obstruct, and hinder the wholesomeness from arising. That's why they are called nivarana hindrances. Because they make the mind polluted, dirty, and impure, that's why they are called Siddhaso Upekilesa, mental obduracies. And when these are arising, it weakens the knowledge, and the knowledge that has arisen will be dispelled. That's why these are called Panyaya Jupali Karana. It weakens the knowledge and it makes the knowledge that had arisen to disappear. So one should think whether or not the Nivrana should be accepted or dispelled. So when these Nivranas are arising in the mind, the mind will be impure, polluted and dirty. That's why it is essential to dispel the Nivrana hindrances. And one should also have a strong will in order to dispel the Nivrana. One should also learn the correct method. One should learn the method how to dispel these nivranas, and one should also have a strong will to dispel these nivranas. So if the person is able to note the object with aim and effort, then he she will be gaining concentration and the mind will be away from these nivrana. The mind will be away from hindrances. So when the mind is away from hindrances, there will be kaya viveka and also siddha viveka. So when the mind is free from nivrana, one will gain joy and happiness. So there will be joy and happiness having this samatha when the mind is calm and tranquil. So this samatha, the mind being calm and tranquil, it is very good. So the jhana that is associating with this samatha will be obtained. And also the knowledge that is associating with this jhana absorption is called jhana samadhiti. So jhana samadhiti, knowledge will be gained through jhana. So these nivranas hinders and obstructs so that ordinary kind of wholesomeness and also jhana wholesomeness and maga wholesomeness. So these wholesomeness of ordinary kind, jhana absorption and path wholesomeness has no chance to arise because of the nivrana. So these nivrana hinders and obstructs so that wholesomeness cannot arise and it pollutes the mind and also it weakens the knowledge and it also obstructs so that knowledge cannot arise at all. So one should dispel these nivrana by removing Dispelling the nivrana, the mind will be pure and clean and also knowledge will develop and also knowledge will become stronger and stronger. So how can the nivrana be overcome? 
So one needs to know the method how to overcome nivarana. And the practice of Lokiya Dhana, the practice of mundane absorption, one has to observe the meditation device such as Patavi Kasina, the meditation device of earth, should be observed. So there are 38 or 40 kind of meditation device in order to gain the Lokiya Jhana, mundane kind of Jhana. So by observing any one of these 40 kinds of meditation devices, one can attain Lokiya Jhana. So in order to attain Lokiya Jhana, one should observe any one of these meditation uh, devices, aiming the mind towards the object and putting effort so that the noting mind will fall on the object of meditation. When the noting mind falls calm and collected on the object of meditation, there will be ekagata, collectedness of mind. So when there is ekagata, one-pointedness or collectedness of the mind, then kama sandha, sensual desire, has no chance to arise. And Yabada, ill will, has no chance to arise when the yogi notes the object with aim and effort. Mm-hmm. So when noting with aim and effort, there will not be tinamita, slog and topper. So tina, mita, can make the mind contracted and shrink. But applying vitaka, aiming, the mind will open, blossom, and become active and alert. So applying vitaka, the mind opens, blossom, active and alert. So the mind will be free from tina mita, sloth and topper. When there is samadhi, uh, collectedness of mind or one-pointedness of the mind, the mind will be free from hindrances such as samadhanda, sensual desire. When the noting mind is rubbing against the object, there will be no uncertainty or doubt. So in this way, one will be overcoming these hindrances. So when the object is observed with concentration, there will be vivekaja, pitisukha, there will be joy, rapture, and happiness through practice. When piti is present, when there is joy, one will not have yabada, ill will, anger, or hatred and the mind will not be scattered, it will not be restless, and also there will not be any remorse. So in this way, the high class wholesomeness will arise so that the mind is not polluted, the mind is not impure, but the mind will be pure and also knowledge will be developed stage by stage. So in this jhana, there are factors of jhana which is dispelling the nivrana hindrances so that the hindrances will become weakened, lessened, and also the factors leading to the arising of the nivrana will be Dispelled. So in this way, the mind is free from the nivrana. So there is this definition of samatha. Patanika dhamme samadhiti samatha. It means that samatha can 
calm, suppressed, and tranquil the opposite mental states such as nibbana hindrances. And the knowledge associating with samatha is called jhana samaditi. So if one goes on to practice jhana, so there can be neighborhood absorption, <coughs> attainment, absorption uh, will be developed. So by developing jhana, the jhana factors of vitaka, vichara, piti, sukha, egakada, initial application, sustained application, joy, happiness, and the collectedness of mind are these uh, jhana factors. So the first two jhana factors, vitaka, initial application, it's just like a, a gross wave and vichara is just like a refined form of wave. And having these two factors, vitaka and vichara, are not good because they are gross. So the person overcomes these two jhana factors. So the mind, the noting mind, will automatically be aimed and uh, aimed without having to aim for it especially. So in this way, the first two jhana factors of vitaka and vichara are overcome. And the jhana factor of piti, uh, one see it as a flaw and also sukha, because sukha is near to piti, one sees the piti and sukha as a flaw. So one sees flaw in the piti and sukha and overcomes the jhana factor. And finally, the jhana will be made up of two of the factors, upeka and egekata. So at the stage of the Satuta jhana, at the stage of the fourth jhana, there will only be Upeka and Ekakata, two of the jhana factors will be present. And one goes on to practice Arupa jhana, immaterial jhana. So jhana means overcoming, suppressing, tranquilizing the nibbana hindrances, so that the hindrances will become weaker and weaker and they will become distant. So jhana can overcome the nibbana hindrances as well as it can overcome the gross jhanic factors. So according to the definition, kusa, Kusa is the knowledge that can overcome the nirvana hindrances that are contemptible and also one can weaken and overcome the gross form of jhana factors. So in this way, this kusa is the kind of knowledge associating with lokiya jhana, nothing kind of absorption. And with this knowledge, one can obtain jhana kusala, wholesomeness of absorption. So if one pursues this jhana path, one can attain adhinyana, supernormal knowledge, and also one can practice this jhana as a foundation of vipassana. If one practices jhana alone, and if one dies by gaining this jhana, one can be reborn as a Brahma, relevant to the jhana stage that he, she had obtained. So becoming a Brahma, there will be a very long lifespan, so tomorrow, Jaraji will explain 
why the Brahma has a very long lifespan. So Chatterjee will explain with an example of a scientific method. So Chatterjee does not mean to say that the teaching of the Buddha equals the uh, scientific method. Chatterjee does not mean to say that the teaching of the Buddha is equivalent to the scientific method, but Chatterjee is just uh, trying to say that Buddha's teaching could be verified scientifically. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.